So obviously the only way to have a real minimalist wardrobe is to stick to the basics. Black, white, or gray t-shirts only, colors are too risky. In fact, it's best if you don't try to express yourself through your clothing at all. Actually, the opposite is true when it comes to creating a minimalist wardrobe that you won't regret. There are really only three rules to making all of this snap into place like magic, and luckily they work for anyone and everyone because I'm not a fashionista. I don't even own a belt. I had to dig this necklace that I'm wearing out of the bottom of my jewelry jar because I so rarely wear jewelry. I envy people with the gumption to invest energy into their wardrobe. I really do. I love watching Christina Micas with her classy downtown vibe. And a part of me yearns whenever I see Erin Sanderson absolutely killing it on Instagram with her rocker chic vibe. I wish. And while I hate it when people give up and fall into the classic mom sweats category of attire, and I certainly don't aspire to that, I can't deny that I'm a simple dresser. And I say all of this because whether you're like me or hot rocker Erin, if you want to keep a manageable essential wardrobe with no regrets, knowing yourself is kind of a foundation point for implementing the three rules that we're going to talk about today especially since the first rule is knowing your core style. I reach for comfort and ease over dressing up all the time. In fact, I built my style around that so that I don't end up with unflattering outfits in every impromptu photo. Your wardrobe can be any style and still be minimalist and essential to you. I'm not saying to never try new things. I 100% went out and bought a leather jacket after watching Erin rock one on her profile and I wore it too for like two years. But eventually I did sink back into my tried and true core style of what I like to call elegant comfort. And core style doesn't just apply to the things that everyone else sees. I think one of the most satisfying clothing purchases I've made has been a comfortable wireless bra that fits my body perfectly and can be worn with 98% of my clothes. There are still a few shirts that I have to go strapless with. When you're following this rule of sticking to your core style, you're gonna find that you're happy to wait a little longer to buy the right piece, even if you have to pay full price. The regret typically comes from the choice even more so than the cost, because wasted money is wasted money. This is true of any age. In fact, when I'm 70, I hope I look like this woman. If you're not sure what your personal style is, start by looking at the pieces you already own and love. Do you notice any patterns? Do you maybe have a thing for vintage denim or a weakness for cashmere sweaters? Use these insights as building blocks for your wardrobe going forward. The second rule is to work around your core colors. If you look at my wardrobe, you'll probably notice a color theme. It's not even by design, it's because of me relying on the clothes that I'm naturally drawn to. And ever since I was a kid, I've been drawn to mild neutral tones with grays being my number one magnet, for sure. It's not even a minimalist thing, it's just a me thing. Sometimes I'll be out thrifting and when I go to try things on, I'll realize that I have like five different versions of basically the same soft gray sweater. It happens all the time. Case in point, I recently ordered some clothes from Unbound Merino, who are kind enough to sponsor this video, and all of their clothes are made out of merino wool from Merino Sheep that doesn't feel like wool for those of you who are like my husband who hate the itchiness of normal wool, which is great because I got him a matching charcoal shirt as well. But they have a variety of simple cuts and colors, even brighter colors like apricot and coral. But I chose two boxy tees, one in charcoal and one in harbor gray, and this dress that I'm wearing right now that's actually my favorite color they offer, which is dusty teal. Why? Because I know myself. This is what I'm going to wear. Simple, stylish, versatile with no logos, understated and timeless. What's cool and different about this company, um, Valmarino, is that they're created for travelers by travelers. All of the items pack flat and light, and they can be worn for weeks without needing to be washed. Check them out for yourself if you're looking to do some travel or just some general wardrobe simplifying and shrinking. You can get 10% off using my code MIA10 and the link in the description. Your favorite colors to wear don't have to coincide with your favorite colors. Just because you love purple doesn't mean you're gonna like the way you look in it. I found that to be the case with me and certain shades of blush and lavender. I love the colors and they would look gorgeous on somebody else, but because of my pale pink skin, they make me look completely washed out. You can't even notice the shirt because it just blends in with me. I wear black sometimes, but you'll notice I only own a couple of black pieces hanging in my closet or my drawers because it makes my skin look a bit stark or bright. 
but you may have a lovely caramel skin tone that flourishes in pinks and florals that I could never pull off. I've seen photos of people with dark ebony tones that look absolutely stunning in stark white or royal blues. If I were the same thing, I might feel like I was glowing. Now, yes, it'll make the minimalist aspect of your wardrobe flow better if you have some sort of cohesive palette, but even more importantly, a palette needs to complement you if you're hoping to decrease that turnover and any regret. And also a cohesive palette doesn't always mean matchy matchy. For example, earth tones like olive green, burnt orange, sometimes a little bit of mustard yellow can add warmth to a wardrobe without clashing. So you can mix different shades of colors together without everything needing to be just one shade or one or two shades throughout. And the last rule is to choose flattering cuts for your body type. This is the biggest factor for me. The way something fits on you, even if it's the right size and the right color, can really make or break how you feel about yourself in it. I've always had a very long neck and upper torso, so I can get away with open mouth necklines, off the shoulders, and really just loose fits tend to look more elegant on me than they might if my proportions were different. But I have never and will never be able to get away with a tube top or anything strapless. I almost look naked, or at very least, I look like I'm doing something very wrong. I could wear a crop top, but only with a very high-waisted pant because I've had three children and no surgery, so I have the stomach of someone who's had three children. It's the cuts of my clothing that I've had to adjust more than anything. So get to know your body's unique shape and what styles complement it best. This could mean opting for high-waisted pants if you're tall and you want to accentuate your legs, or choosing an A-line dress to highlight your waist. Remember, the goal is to feel good about what you're wearing. So if you're constantly adjusting your clothes and feeling self-conscious, it's not the right fit for your wardrobe. But that's it. As long as you have a wardrobe of clothes that are your core style, they're your core colors, and they're cuts that look flattering on you even if you happen to gain or lose five pounds, well, you're not gonna have any regret about that. There's not gonna be any, well, I shouldn't have bought this because everything that you own is gonna be for you. Experiment a little from there, try maybe a leather jacket here or a brightly colored flouncy shirt there and not feel like you're completely wasting your wardrobe or wasting your space by making these few tiny little tweaks. Hopefully you found value in this. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Thanks again to Unbound Merino for sponsoring this video, and I will chat with you next week.